thanks to the supporters of channel member Mumongu Gaming. If ever you were in need of uh, finding out how just how small time we are as a football club at the moment, we've made it to the quarterfinal of the, bear with me, the Cherry Red Records Premier Challenge Cup. And we're so excited about it, we started losing league games because we, we can't sleep. Welcome to part 12 of Wembley to Wembley. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have that quarterfinal of the Cherry Red Records Premier Challenge Cup away against Westfield. We're then also going to play Risborough Rangers in the league, which is pretty much a top of the table clash since you were last with me um everything was going brilliantly we were about to break our own unbeaten record from earlier in the season and then we got a little bit too close to this quarter final and just decided to lose a couple of games so we went to Ardley and lost 4-3 which is fair enough Ardley are pushing for the playoffs as well it was a tight game what was more upsetting was losing at home to Hollyport or Holyport I still don't know exactly how you say it but losing at home to them not so good. So that means it's the first time this season we've lost two consecutive games. We are still top of the league because we pulled out a nice little uh, a nice little gap at the top of the league at one point. Uh, two points clear of Tooting and Mitcham, uh, four points clear of Risborough, six points clear of Rainers Lane, although they have a game in hand. So we are still looking good for the playoffs. We just need to turn this rough form around and quick and hopefully once we get the cup game out of the way that's exactly what will happen um anton canerva by the way back in the team and look at him go eight goals from seven starts averaging a 7.46 he's the player this year that we thought he was going to be last year and he is having a lovely lovely time um also non-league so transfers are still happening um i had mark johnston left in the last episode maybe he had we have brought in another attacking midfielder daniel o'sullivan um who joins us from romulus uh, he's only played one game so far but just to uh fill in for some of the players who've moved on archie kieran and stefanishan were both attacking midfielders so they uh they have been adequately replaced at this point. So Westfield are fifth in the Combined Counties League Premier South. We play in the Combined Counties League Premier North, so it's the equivalent league. Um, I don't know why Worcester are in the South and Wembley are in the North. I choose not to question it. It's very confusing. Westfield, though, very much in the uh, in the south rather than the north, and they're trapped in this no man's land around Woking and Guildford and places that I've only ever passed through and in over 40 years have never had reason to actually stop in. Um, but they're not named after the shopping centre in London, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, but they, they play at Woking Leisure Centre by the looks of it. Let's have a little look at that from above. I mean, that's a nice looking leisure centre. They've got multiple small pitches. I guess they're AstroTurf pitches. You've got the Woking Skate Park, Woking Swimming Club, the pool in the park. Nice big car park. Um, the Woking Wurlitzer. What on earth is a Wurlitzer? That's a Wurlitzer, everybody. It's a museum with a big keyboard thing in. And then just here, we have Westfield FC. Let's see how close we can get to having a look at the stadium. Looks like we can get pretty close, I guess. That's the Leisure, s That's the leisure Centre. And this is the football ground, do we think? Does that say Guides and Sea Rangers? Maybe that's not the football ground. Can we come up this way a bit? Can we see a football pitch anywhere? There's no sign of one back there. So is this maybe the football ground? If we come up here, I think these are the AstroTurfs. Oh, hold on. Hold on. This guy knows where it is. Look, he's got his shopping with him. Is that the football ground the other side of that? Hold on. So our best bet of getting a view of the football pitch is probably here. We need to be here and then look away from the AstroTurf. So multi-story car park at Woking Park I think it's the other side of this fence I think that's the football pitch I mean it's quite the fancy sports facility I don't know why he's walking in the middle of the road though arrogance that is I'm so confident I'm not going to get run over I'm just going to walk next to the pavement hideous and this is our team for that game. So we've got Dylan in gold Dylan by the way um, who we've given a new contract to um, because 
There's, there is nobody better. He's the best goalkeeper in non-league. He's a constant source of frustration, but he's the finest goalkeeper this level of football has ever seen. I hope that's not true, but we've not found anyone better, so we've extended his contract. So Dylan in goal, a back four of Cornish, Antwi, Haley, and Harris. Antwi, similar to some of the other youngsters from last year, hasn't really had a look in this year. And as all the others, when they come back in the team, seem great. We're trying it again with Antwi. We want the four pillars to be a thing. So Antwi back in the team. Martin and Terry ahead of him in midfield. Terry wasn't recalled by Dagenham. So they really, really don't want him, do they? Bless him. Um, and then Russ Eddy alongside Sant and then Ward and McNichol up front. Um, let's get Galbraith off the bench. There's, there's just no good reason for having a goalkeeper on a bench in a game like this. So we've got Pierce and Canerva on the bench, plus club captain Worry. Um, so lots of, uh, lots of options off the bench if things aren't going our way. But... Fingers crossed things will go our way. We're top of our league. They're fifth in theirs. But we have learned over previous cup games that some of the other teams, at, some of the other leagues at our level are possibly a little stronger than us. Rainers Lane playing Jersey Bulls. Jersey Bulls would have been an interesting one. Um, I'm, I want I want big teams for big draws. So Jersey Bulls, Met Police. Obviously, we'd like to avoid Rainers Lane because they're in our league and we play them anyway. And Worcester City, we've just seen a top of this league that Westfield are in. So we'd quite like to, uh, we'd quite like to beat Westfield and avoid Raiders Lane and Worcester and maybe get the Met Police or the Jersey Bulls. That would be quite fun. Um, but of course, we do have to make our way past Westfield first, which based on the way we've played in our last couple of matches is easier said than done because we've gone from being brilliant for like 10 matches in a row to just incredibly frustrating. And every now and again, we have a really frustrating game in us and we've had two in a row now. And I just hope it's not the start of like a, a downward trajectory of form. It's one of the reasons Antwi's back in now because... Our defending has been a little bit ropey in recent matches, so let's get him back in. And if he ends up looking as good as Canerva has when he came back in the team, as Martin and Pierce did when they came back into the team, hopefully Antwi can come in and resurrect our defence and maybe even make Dylan look good. That would be a thing, wouldn't it? Still nil-nil as we hit half an hour. It's been pretty even. I mean, all the stats are pretty much the same so far between the two sides. So there's not very much to separate us. And as usual, Cross comes in. Dylan has no idea it's there, um, but does manage to collect it when it comes back off of the crossbar. So what we've maybe learnt there is he just needs a little bit of extra time to, to react. Maybe if we started playing with a beach ball rather than a football, so it floated a little bit more, he'd have more of a chance of maybe one day collecting a cross because he just reacts to everything so slowly, which I'll level with you, is not ideal for a goalkeeper. Oh yeah, I'm good in goal, but I my reactions are quite slow. But when I do eventually move, it looks impressive. And if you kick it really slowly, I might get to the ball. I mean, he did a dive there, didn't he? He's got dirty shorts today, which is... I mean, it's an improvement on where he is a lot of the time. Uh, Westfield... Oh, my word. It's one of the forbidden screens. Uh, Westfield ended up having the better of the second half of the first half, but it remains nil-nil. They didn't capitalise on um, having a little bit of a, a run of XG towards the end of the half. They've dominated possession, completely dominated possession, which is something we're not particularly used to. But... Uh, Fingers crossed, we get, we're going to get a little moment where we maybe get a couple of shots in a row, get a few chances, and maybe we can capitalise where they weren't able to. Although the first highlight of this second half is with Westfield again, and this team are fifth in the, the parallel league to ours. It really does make me think that we've somehow... I don't know if it's good luck or bad luck that our league is seemingly so weak. It certainly helped us end up top of it. But it doesn't bode well for us when we eventually get out of it, whether that's this year or next year or whatever it might be, because it looks like all of the other equivalent teams at our level are, are better than us. Russ Eddie plays it into Ward, though, and Ward with the effort there. I thought that... I thought that was a save. I think it's. I think he was actually offside. It's not been given as a goal kick, which is a little bit alarming. So I think he was offside. So I'll uh, I'll allow it. But Russ Eddy trying to create things again. It always comes through Russ Eddy, doesn't it? It's just always the way. Right, we're going to bring on Canerva, who has been in great form. So hopefully he can come on and make something happen. We're also going to bring on Dom Pierce. Uh, similar similar explanation. Uh, he's been playing pretty well since getting back into the team. So fingers crossed, get 
getting uh, getting. Well, I mean, we've got all four of the pillars on the pitch at the same time at the moment. Plus Russ Eddy, we've got five of our homegrown boys on the pitch at the same time, which doesn't happen very often. Um, and now we're going to take off Terry. We'll bring on. Uh, I think we'll yeah we'll bring on Worry, and then we can put Martin into his preferred playmaker position. Worry can just be in there and be a leader for the big cup game. And I mean, does this go to extra time? Does it go to a replay? Does it go to penalties? I don't know the rules. What I do know is I would like a late goal so I don't have to find out what the rules are. I would like to go through this entire save never knowing the rules to this competition because it means we didn't spend a lot of time in this league. Oh, that's so frustrating. Referee, are we going to give that as offside? Or is our cup dream dead? Are we just focusing on the league for the rest of the season? He's not giving it offside. The absolute monster. Now we will demand more as soon as we can. We've gone very attacking. Can we demand more? I, what? I should be able to do another shout after a goal goes in. It doesn't matter that I did one quite recently. Wasn't able to do a shout the whole time because I did one just before the goal. Ridiculous. Right, well, that's us out of the cup. We don't need to worry about that anymore. Um, now, at least we can 100% focus on the league. That is alarming, though. Three defeats in a row. We are not playing very well at all. We're going to go and play North Greenford United off camera, although they are hovering around the playoffs as well. And then we've got Risborough Rangers at home, who are properly up there as tight rivals for us. I mean, if things go badly against North Greenford, Risborough could go above us by beating us, and that would really, really upset me. So, fingers crossed we can get a win back against North Greenford United now. Well, we managed to rescue a point against North Greenford with a late equaliser from O'Sullivan. This is what the league table looks like going into the Risborough game. So, Rain is laying now only one point behind us. Risborough, two points behind. Remember, Risborough Rangers did beat us earlier in the season as well. Um, where is it? They beat us 3-2 at their place earlier in the year. We've now not won in four matches. This is very much a day when we need to get back to winning ways. And I finally lost patience with Harry Dillon. Uh, Jonah Galbraith is going to play in goal for us. We signed him. Uh, we signed him earlier in this in the earlier in the season. We signed him over the summer. He was one of the many players who joined us from Northern Ireland. And uh, yeah, after giving Dylan a new contract, I've now binned him off, and we'll go with Galbraith and see if he's any kind of improvement. Uh, we're also bringing Canerva back into the team with Eddie and Sant behind him, Wilson and Worry together in midfield. Just do a football, lads. Come on, it's not that hard. I really would like to get back to winning ways. We were in such, a, we've had such a good season. It's the end of January and we're, we are still top of the league. We've got 92 people here at Vale Farm watching us. That's almost double what we were getting through the gate on average last season. It's a big game, a, a big crowd. Now, today's the day to show that we're actually serious about winning the league because if we don't win today, I mean, I guess the pre-season expectation was always playoffs, and it's fine if that's where we end up. But we've been top of the league for a little while. We were five points clear at one point. I would very much like a win today to just let the world know that, yeah, we are planning on going up automatically. If it's all the same to you. And Oliver Ward is there with his ninth goal of the season to open the scoring and hopefully take a leap towards exactly that for us. We want to win the league. I hate the playoffs. I don't know if I've ever mentioned it in videos before. I don't have a great record in the playoffs. So I'd quite like to not have to play in them ever at any point during the save. Obviously, we'll do it if we have to. But... I'd much rather finish first or sixth <laughs> because at least then we get promoted without the pain or we're like, oh, we nearly got in the playoffs. We're almost there. We, we're quite good, but oh, never mind. Not quite. I hate the playoffs, though. Galbraith's no better than Dylan. I mean, it, to be fair, it was a decent effort. I, I mean, it does go into my theory of there is no such thing as a good goalkeeper in Tier 9. And I think my expectations for what a goalkeeper should be able to do were maybe a little bit too high. It's always the problem when you go deep into non-league, having most recently managed Borussia Dortmund and the best goalkeeper in the world at the end of non-league to legend. I got, I kind of got used to, I was spoilt by having a goalkeeper who made saves sometimes and we just don't have that and I don't think we're going to have that for many, many seasons and I just need to readjust, reacclimatize myself to what goalkeepers are like at this level. Wilson with the effort that sails over the crossbar, I would have quite liked to have retaken the lead 
just before half time worryingly it's Risborough who've got a free kick and a very dangerous area this is going to be the big test of if I made the right decision to bring Galbraith in it's not the first time this season I've dropped Dylan um, I think you saw before the match Galbraith's played two or three matches before so I do have previous for doing this maybe don't do it in the big matches though oh dear this is I mean, he's not showered himself with glory there, has he? We don't even have Dylan on the bench to be able to bring him on and acknowledge at half time that maybe I overreacted. We go attacking. Risborough top of the league as it stands. And I'm very sad about it because we were doing so well and it's just fallen apart. And I don't I don't really know why. I thought it was just football manager doing that thing it does when there's a big game on the horizon. It doesn't let you in for a bit to simulate the players being a little stressed. It always seems to happen before big cup games. But the big cup games come and gone. We're still rubbish. Um and I don't really I don't really understand why. Ah, right. Regroup. Let's go do a goal, shall we? Canerva's been in great form. Why is he not scoring goals? He was scoring at basically a goal a game before I turned the camera on. Uh, Worry plays it forward, looking for Ward. Ward can't get there. It's, I mean, it's just an aimless lump forward. We're playing with two attacking midfielders. We shouldn't be aimlessly lumping the ball forward. We're better than that. We need to be actually using our best players, and our best players are our attacking midfielders. And if we're just lumping the ball forward to the centre forward, we are not getting the best out of our best players. It's just stupid. Really stupid. Um, annoyingly, as well, the match stats are very even. We've had six shots on target. They've had two. We've scored once. They've scored twice. <laughs> so Galbraith hasn't actually made a save yet in this match, which is it is it, it, it is troubling. It is quite troubling. Right, Russ Eddy is going to come off. We're going to bring on Jay Hards for him. I think we'll also take off Sant. Bring on. We're going to do a triple. We're doing a triple change. We're not doing a triple change because I don't have McNichol on the bench. What was I thinking? Right, we'll just change those two. Canerva and Ward stay on. And we go with Pierce and Hards behind them now. Try some different attacking midfielders. See if that makes a difference. We'll offer encouragement. Demanding more didn't work. So let's see if we can try and tickle them into victory. We're going very attacking. We have got one more change to make, but it's not anyone that can be particularly attacking. It's just going to be Terry coming on for um, for Worry. He can be the playmaker, I guess. We've gone very attacking. It's now time to demand more if we can. Can we demand more now, please? Nothing has happened in this second half, really. Which, again, is, it adds to the frustration. Because if you look at the match stats, we've doubled their XG. They have literally had two shots on target and scored them both. And other than that, we've controlled the entire match. But been rubbish in goal and just not had any, any kind of finishing up top. We've been toothless in that second half completely. That's five games now without a win. I don't think we're going up automatically. If we carry on like this, we'll either fall out of the playoffs or best case scenario, go into them in terrible form and lose them. We, How many more games have we got? We've got enough time to turn this around and drag ourselves back up the league. So we'll probably come back in the next episode for, I guess, for Tooting and Mitchum. Rainers Lane's a little soon, but Tooting and Mitchum there. And then hopefully by then we'll be back top of the league again. That'd be nice, won't it? If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.